Welcome to Press TV's News Review. The United States has imposed fresh Iran-related sanctions as part of its so-called maximum pressure campaign against Iran. The U.S. Treasury Department said the sanctions targeted research group and its director linked to Iran's defense ministry. The department accused the entity of being involved in Iran's chemical weapons research. The Treasury Department said the U.S. will continue to counter what it called Iran's efforts to advance its malign agenda. Iran has time and again rejected such allegations and says the U.S. is the source of instability in West Asia. Iran also wants a ban on chemical weapons. The U.S. itself is one of the biggest owners of such weapons. During World War II, the U.S. bombed Japan with nuclear bombs, killing over 100,000 people. Well, let's give you some insight into that story through the help of Mr. Tim Anderson. He's the director with the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, who joins us out of Sydney via Skype. Sir, it's good to have you with us. You know, one interesting fact is that you, I'm pretty sure that you also know that Iran was, um, you know, a victim of chemical weapons used by Saddam Hussein during its imposed war. And yet it's very interesting that a country that has tasted the bitterness of the attacks of uh, with chemical weapons is uh, imposed sanctions upon on the pretext of working of nuclear of sorry chemical activities don't you think yes well this is the latest in a series of uh, weapons of mass destruction fabrications that the u.s has used against a range of countries so it's notorious now the fake accusations that were made against iraq prior to the invasion in 2003 um, and it should be equally notorious that the fake claims of chemical weapons use in Syria also have been disproved by many independent experts. But I don't know, maybe the, that your viewers don't know, that back in 1988, the US government accused Iran of using uh, chemical weapons against the village of Halabja in Iraq. Now, it was later demonstrated that that was by Saddam Hussein, who right. was using chemical weapons against some of his own people as well as against Iran. I believe that at least 5,000 Iranians were killed and around 100,000 uh, injured by the chemical weapons. We know now that the US backed Saddam Hussein in the use of those chemical weapons, including providing satellite imagery on the troop placements of Iranian troops in the late 80s. And Saddam used mustard gas and sarin, a range of, a range of agents there. So the US has used these fabrications for since the 80s against Iran, against Iraq, against Syria, to distract from its own uh, bastardry in the region, effectively, its invasion of so many countries, its support of terrorist groups and so on. And of course, why is it going on now in the dying days of the Trump regime? The Trump regime is trying to resurrect some sort of pretext to demonize Iran once again. So what's new, I, I ask? You know, you know, that uh, is, uh, you know, some kind of a lame duck activity. You know, that's not what you expect from an outgoing uh, uh, president. Perhaps, I don't know, he is capitalizing on coming back in 2024. And, you know, he uh, perhaps is looking to have prepared the ground uh, when he, uh, you know, thinks that he's actually coming back. Uh, but yeah, Tim Anderson, you just touched upon a very important point. Is he trying to basically make more stumbling blocks on the way uh, of, of the negotiations and the relations that will perhaps happen, you know, within the JCPOA between Iran and the U.S., of course, under President Biden? Is he trying to do that? Yes, I think so. I think there's some favors for Netanyahu and uh, the Zionist entity there to try and block that. And, and indeed, it's the case that uh, Biden is going to be a leader, let's remember, without great initiative. He is more or less a creature of the system, uh, not fighting it in the way that Trump did. Um, and so Biden will be pushed around by the developments that have happened um, since uh, his, uh, his regime in, in 2015 signed the JCPOA. So Trump has indeed created some obstacles for the incoming beaten regime to deal with. And uh, I think it's unlikely that it'll be smooth sailing to just simply, for Biden to simply accept uh, the JCPA and roll back everything that Trump's done. So he certainly is, I believe, trying to impose some sort of ob obstacles, if not necessarily start a, a major uh, conflict.
Now, let's talk about something that is outside this, but it's very, very interesting, Mr. Anderson. You know, it was, um, I'm again pretty sure that you remember that the party that uh, provided those chemical weapons to the Saddam regime back in the 80s, some of them were Europeans, you know better than I which ones. And it's very interesting. They are party to the JCPOA. They not only act upon their commitments um, mm -hmm. that uh, have to come with the JCPOA and, you know, haven't helped Iran with the economy during the past two, th two years that the uh, U.S. has actually withdrawn from the JCPOA. Not only that, but when now talk is about sanctions on Iran's uh, chemical activities, they are still silent. You know, there is a record on these guys. You know, they have to come speak out and, you know, say something. Uh, when they have this on their record. Don't you think that their silence is very interesting? Well, I think in a way, um, as I said, it's a distraction, I think, this latest uh, claim. I think it's going to fade away. I mean, the U.S. has mm. been doing this since the 80s. They've done it many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. and Iran both signed the Chemical Weapons Convention in 1997. And Iran acted on it, and the U.S. didn't. It still hasn't destroyed its own stockpile. But what's much more relevant, I would have thought, and, and do you agree with me on this, that, that France and Britain and my own country, Australia, are actually selling weapons to the Saudi regime, the mm -hmm. worst uh, sponsor of terrorism in the entire region. Those weapons are going directly into the hands of groups like Daesh and the MEK and Jabhat al-Nusra and so on. So these are real weapons that are being used against civilians, never mind the speculation that the U.S. has been carrying on for mm -hmm. for many, many decades. I think this is another smokescreen to cover up their own crimes. And let's not lose focus on the real crimes that are occurring in the region. OK, and, you know, one last thing before you go, you know, it's very interesting. You again, you said it, you know, nobody. Uh, uh, I wonder, you tell me if anybody is really going to buy it. You know, you had the idea of weapons ma of mass destruction, which led to the 2003 uh, takeover of the of, of Iraq by the U.S. and its allies. You know, the same thing was sold to the British people through uh, then Prime Minister Tony Blair. And it's very interesting. It's been going on and on and on and on more recently in Syria. And again, you know, this it's it's the same thing do you really think that the organizations i don't know international organizations you know ordinary people do you really think that such a scenario is viable for anybody is believable well unfortunately you know we have in my country for example and to some extent it's similar in, in other western countries a very toxic corporate media uh, made up of groups that back virtually every war that's happened in living memory. And so the repetition of these sorts of lies by those media channels and the freezing out of independent voices by those media channels, uh, unfortunately, it does influence people. And uh, what's the old saying? You repeat a lie often enough and people are, uh, if they don't believe it, they are intimidated into saying anything against it. They may be skeptical. You think they would be skeptical after the lies were revealed in Iraq, but they went and did it again in Syria, and now they're trying to do it again to Iran. So nothing is new. Well, I guess we just seem to have lost that connection with Mr. Tim Anderson. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Tim Anderson, if you hear me, is a director uh, for the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney, Australia. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of News Review on Press TV. Stay with us.